Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Amin here and today I'm going to be telling you how to become a genetic counselor like myself. I am a board certified clinically practicing genetic counselor. I was in your shoes just a few years ago and I wish I came across a video like this that told me from beginning to end how to achieve this goal. I have made many videos on my channel before and this for sure is my top asked question. So let's go into it. Let's start at step number one of how to become a practicing genetic counselor. The first step to becoming a genetic counselor is really to figure out if this is a career path for you. You need to dive deep into the realm of genetic counseling, really have a good understanding of what it is. This application process, as you'll find out, is very lengthy it's very specific so when you apply for a genetic counseling school you need to make sure this is actually something that you want to do that's your end goal it's not just you know one of the many master's programs that you're applying to because the programs will be able to kind of see through that they really want people who are genuinely interested basically their main goal at the end of the day is to become a genetic counselor not just work in healthcare. there are many different ways that you can figure out if this is the right career for you obviously you know plugging my content you can watch a lot of my content I do a lot of week in the life, day in the life videos about my job as a prenatal and adult genetic counselor. There are plenty of other resources out there. You can always watch conferences, attend conferences either live or watch recordings to see what kind of education genetic counselors need to maintain. You can try to contact genetic counselors, so either through LinkedIn. There are resources which I'll link below where you can find a list of genetic counselors and meet with them either in person if you're looking for somebody you know working in your state or in your province or city or you can even do virtual interviews. Um, I did a lot of interviews on the phone. I did a lot of interviews over video call. This was back before COVID, but even then it kind of broadens your perspective to talk to people, maybe not in the same immediate geographic area, but things that you might have an interest in. There are so many different kinds of fields that a genetic counselor can work in. So typically the two categories are really clinical and non-clinical, and maybe it would be a good idea to get a bit more information about what those roles entail and see if it's a good fit for you. So once you've done all that and you say, okay, yes, this career sounds exciting to me. It's exactly what I was looking for. Then you have to start preparing for the application process. I have an entire video where I go through in more detail the prerequisites that are needed to become a genetic counselor. But one of the main questions that I get is, can I just do any masters? Do I have to do a specific degree to become a genetic counselor? And the answer is yes. You have to have a specific specialized degree that gives you a master's in genetic counseling or a master's in human genetics and these degrees are accredited by certain bodies so I can only speak based on North America so that's Canada and the US where each program has to maintain certain guidelines in order to have their students graduate and be able to write the certification exam so each program will have certain courses that they need to teach the students and they'll also have a certain number of cases or a number of hours or types of cases that a student needs to either participate in or observe throughout their graduate program as well and so they are very specialized degrees. When you go to school for genetic counseling, you are only learning about genetic counseling. You're not taking any filler courses as you might have in undergrad. These are degrees that are meant to teach you how to become a genetic counselor, how to write the board exam, and then at the end of the day, become a practicing genetic counselor. So like I said, I do have another video where I go into the prerequisites about how to get into a master's. There's a few different things I can briefly touch base on. First thing is that most programs will require you to have certain courses. Each program is different. Each each program has different prerequisites so that's something to really consider when you are going through the application process there are over 50 programs in the US and four programs in Canada and they all have different requirements they all have a different application process so it's not a one-size-fits-all necessarily in general though programs will require you to have of course some kind of genetics background so a genetics course they will ask you to have some kind of statistics course they'll ask you to have maybe some chemistry for sure they're going to ask you to have psychology because the counseling part of genetic counseling is quite important so those are the kind of the basic courses that you're going to be required to do some will require you to do more specialized courses like chemistry or embryology again every program is different so in order for you to apply for a master's program you do need an undergraduate degree this is one of my top asked questions is is there a specific degree that i need do i need to have an undergraduate degree in biology or specifically in genetics and the answer really is no you could have a degree in anything as long as you have the prerequisite courses 
that's as far as I know. Things could have changed, you know, since the time I've graduated, but I know people that are in the field that have a variety of backgrounds. So people that maybe come from an arts background, people that come from a medical background, a technology background. There's so many different ways that you could end up in a master's program, as long as you have the prerequisites that are needed in order to apply for the program. Now, is there one degree that's better than the other? Not necessarily. Um, I would say that it really depends on what you're interested in. If you're interested in the program, the undergraduate program that you're in, you're obviously probably gonna have better grades than if you're taking a degree in something that you're not interested in at all. Um, some people ask me, do, is it more competitive if I have another master's, if I have a PhD? I mean, I'm sure that makes you more competitive. You have more experience under your belt, but I don't think you need to have that experience in order to be a competitive applicant because there's so much else to take into consideration when they're deciding who to interview and who not to interview. So unfortunately, there is no one path to get to being a genetic counselor. There's no one path to ensure that you have an interview. You can come from any background as long as you show, you know, the determination, you have the prerequisite courses, you have decent or good grades, and that you have the experience. Having good grades and having these courses is just one part of the application process. The other part really takes into consideration your experience. One of the main factors that programs really look into is your experience and your exposure to the field and if you really know what genetic counseling is. So like I said, there's many ways that you can go about this. You can do informational interviews, you can volunteer in a genetics clinic, you can get a job in a genetics clinic as a genetic counseling assistant um, you can work in research projects with genetic counselors um, you can you know attend conferences you know watch talks there's so many different ways to kind of get that exposure but that is going to be key the second part of your application I get a lot of questions about this from prospective students is the advocacy experience so almost every program that I know of will ask you to have some kind of exposure to either crisis counseling or working with individuals with specific needs maybe individuals with disabilities this type of experience is so broad and so personalized that you can kind of make anything work in that category. There's no one size fits all. A lot of people do end up doing some kind of crisis support, maybe like a crisis text line or kids help phone. They're accessible. A lot of them are virtual, which is great. Um, if there is something else that you're interested in, by all means, you can go ahead and do that. So for example, I know people that worked with individuals with specific disabilities, maybe they tutored children with disabilities um, maybe you work in a sexual assault support center maybe you help people that are battling addiction mental health services there's so many different aspects that you can kind of make this into your own thing whatever you're passionate about definitely go towards that because the passion will come through it is however very very important that you do have some kind of advocacy experience because again there is that counseling part of becoming a genetic counselor of course it is a healthcare you know related field but in, especially in my role right now a lot of it is just knowing how to talk to people knowing how to talk to people that are going through very difficult things and that might be you giving them bad news it might just it might be them trying to find a diagnosis for their child it might be the expansive history of cancer and themselves or their families these are pretty difficult topics that we're talking about in most cases it could be with a couple that maybe has um, had fertility issues um, or a couple that just found out their carriers for the same thing there are so many different you know aspects of genetic counseling and at the core of it all is the fact that you need to be able to talk to people and you need to be able to take complex information and really be able to make it understandable in easy to understand language um, so for that reason i always encourage everybody to have a solid advocacy experience checklist and a solid understanding of genetic counseling on top of the grades on top of the prerequisites that are required by any program. In terms of the application process, like I said, that's just step one of you know applying to masters is having the required courses and the required experience. Each program will have their own take on terms of how to get through the application process. Um, there will be a personal statement. There will be references that are required. They will have an interview process. These days, a lot of interviews are virtual. After you do the interviews, depending on how many that you get, you will go through the match system. So it's similar to residency programs, for example, where you will rank the programs that you interviewed with you know one through the end um, rank them all the programs will rank their interviewees and then on one day you get matched with the program and that's it 
So like I said, if you want more information about that specific application process, you know, the match system, the prerequisites, all of that, I do have another video where I go into a lot of detail about this. You can definitely check out that video. I'll put it up in the eye, but it'll also be in the description below along with all of my other genetic counseling videos. So let's say you get into a program. Usually there are two years in the program. You'll take, you know, didactic courses where you learn about different theories, different genetics concepts, and then you'll also have your field work, um, which every program does differently. But by the end of it, you will have exposure to different specialties, typically prenatal, pediatric, and cancer, plus a few others. Um, and then you are basically job hunting. So the job hunting process looks different for different people, of course. I was job hunting essentially in my last semester of school. This was back in 2021, but I know the majority of people in my class had a job offer before we graduated because the demand for genetic counselors is so high of course this depends on you know how picky you are about your location and your specialty and maybe the type of job that you're looking for um, but i would say that there are plenty of jobs available even if you go on let's say any job like linkedin or indeed you will find that there are a lot of available jobs for a genetic counselor the interview process of course is going to be very specific they know exactly what you're trained for they know exactly what you're required to do as part of your role there are a lot of options in terms of finding a right job for you there are so many different factors that you can take into consideration when deciding which job is going to be your first job essentially most people like i said will have their job offer before they graduate and every job every employer will give you more information in terms of what they need for your certification so that's the next part so let's say you have a job lined up you're about to graduate and then the next step is to get your board certification so the board certification, I have both Canadian and American, very personal decision. Your employer will tell you which one that they need um, and in what time frame. So for me, for example, I came back to work in Canada. I went to school in the US. I came back to work in Canada and my employer told me they didn't have a specific preference or requirement. I could have one, either or both. I ended up writing both for personal reasons. That's just what I thought was best in my situation. I know some employers that will say you need to have a certification before you start working. Let's say a state has licensure and they need you to be licensed and part of the license is having certification. And then there are others that will say, we'll give you three years to get certified. Um, they will also tell you, especially if you're working in the States, they're probably gonna say American certification. If you're working in Canada, as far as I know, most of them will say American or Canadian. Certification exam, it depends which one you write, the American or the Canadian. I'll talk more about the American one just because that's the more popular one, um, just numbers wise. It's offered two times a year. So it's usually offered in um, late summer, so around August, and then also in February, so in the winter, so twice a year. Um, some people will wait to write it because they want that job experience and other people will want to write it as soon as possible. And for the board exam, essentially the last two years of your schooling has kind of prepared you for this exam, but you will need to study more. There is no way that a program can teach you everything that you need to know for the board exam. So you will need to study. For a lot of people, this ends up being, you know, two to three months of studying. It all depends on, you know, you as a person, what your study tactics are, what works well for you. There are different courses that you can take as well to kind of help prepare you for the boards and there are a lot of resources out there. You can always ask your upper years, the class that graduated before you, for more information or more resources, advice on how to write the board exam. And then you write the board exam, the multiple choice um, exam. And then after that, hopefully you pass, you do find out right away for the American one, if you passed or not, and then you are a certified genetic counselor. And then you think, wow, that's it. I have a job, I'm certified, everything's going great. You actually need to maintain your certification. I think it's a case for a lot of medical professionals where you need to have a certain number of credits to maintain like your certification or your accreditation. And so it's the same for genetic counselors. You have a certain number of years, depending on if you have the Canadian or American um, to maintain a certain number of credits and the way that we do this most often is getting to go to conferences so conferences are one of the large places where you can get a lot of credits um, you know every year or so there are also so many other ways you know sometimes supervising students can give you credits so um, that's something that I do in my in my job right now um, sometimes you can watch webinars like different especially labs like genetic testing labs will put on webinars they won't charge you for the credits if you just attend the webinar so 
that's one way to do it. Um, I think publishing is another way to get credits. And so it is something that you kind of need to maintain, but I think it's also really important to realize that the learning never ends as a genetic counselor. And I think that's why the certification process is the way that it is, is because you need to stay on top of relevant and new technologies. You need to be able to, you know, quickly change the way that you do things, change your practice, because there will always, always be emerging topics that happen in the field. Whatever we were doing, honestly, like even last year is not the same necessarily as what we're doing now. There is so much research being done in this field. It's really important that you stay on top of it. I can't even think of one specialty where you can practice the same throughout your entire career. I don't even think that's possible. So you have to really go to these conferences, go to the webinars, learn what's happening, be able to take it back to your practice and change the way you do things, which I found really intriguing about the career is that you never stop learning. There's always gonna be something better, something new, something exciting to learn. So you're a lifelong learner essentially in this career. So those were all the steps of how to be a genetic counselor from beginning to end. I hope this video was helpful for you. Like I said, I have a lot of other content on my YouTube channel where I go into more detail about all these different aspects. Um, so if you wanna learn more about the application process, even the certification, I vlogged throughout all of my studying when I was um, studying for the board exam, the Canadian and American. If you have more questions, definitely let me know. You can drop them in the comments below. If you have specific videos that you want me to do, I would be more than happy to do them as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you and I hope this answers your question about how to become a genetic counselor. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you next time. Bye.